Wagons away! Hi, I'm Jack Smith, and right now it's station wagon savings time in the West. Time to hit the trail in high style with all the room and comfort that only a Rambler station wagon can give you. The station wagon was once a fixture of American family life. It was a common sight in American garages and frequently featured in popular culture. These days, however, it has nearly vanished from U.S. roads. Americans, at least most of them, just don't like the segment, and it shows in the tiny number of wagons sold every year. Americans just don't like wagons. Uh, for whatever reason. We, we have rejected the, the body style uh, for many years. It's been declining. Um, you know, we think back to perhaps some of those movies like uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, where a family travels across the country in a wagon. Uh, those days are, are long, long behind us. And, and these days, wagon sales are less than 2% of all industry sales. Meanwhile, crossovers and sport utility vehicles continue to swallow market share, leading many manufacturers to believe that if they want to sell a wagon, they need to lift it a bit, maybe cover it with some cladding, and call it a crossover. Well, you want the crossover tag associated with it because that's what people are buying, uh, and that's what they want to buy. At some point, they may want another tag because it's no longer cool to own a crossover or an SUV, but right now that's not the case yet. In 2018, consumers around the world bought just under 2.5 million wagons, roughly a mere 3% of all new cars sold. In the United States, the segment represents only about 1 to 2% of all sales. But in some European countries, sales are several times that. Wagons represented nearly 20% of all sales in Germany and at least a quarter of sales in some Scandinavian countries such as Finland and Sweden. Wagons also comprised 23% of all sales in Czech Republic, 16% in Slovakia, and 15% in Poland. In Sweden, it's our home country, uh, close to 50% of our volume is related to wagons. You have the best residual values, you have the most loyal consumers. And also, that is how we, we live in Sweden. You know, nature is very important. We, we do exactly in line with Americans. You know, it's a lot of uh, football and a lot of sports associated with our kids. So we need a space. And so the legacy of, of wagons is really in our DNA. Also, you see them all over the place, in the roads in, in, in Sweden and in, and in Europe. More than 70% of all wagons sold in the world are sold in Europe. There, the wagon is still seen as an efficient blend of function and performance, especially when fuel prices can be quite high. In, in Europe, the station wagon continues to be uh, uh, the body type for many families, even, even though it ha they have lost traction as well in Europe. Despite the fact that Europe is the world's wagon stronghold, data do suggest that sport utilities are eating into its share on that continent as well. Of course, on the other end of the spectrum, U.S. data show that sport utility vehicles have completely eclipsed the wagon as the family hauler of choice. Wagons have steadily lost share in the U.S. new car market, from 3.69% of new car sales in 2008 to 1.4% in 2018. Crossovers and SUVs grew their share of the new car market in the U.S. by 20% from 2008 to 2018. They now make up nearly half of all new car sales. For now, wagons have managed to find a way to keep a foothold albeit a small one, in America. For example, the segment-straddling Subaru Outback has been a tremendously successful product for that company. Part wagon, part crossover, the Outback was introduced in the 1995 model year as a variant of the Subaru Legacy, but was soon spun out into its own distinct brand and has become something of a phenomenon. The Outback alone accounted for the vast majority of wagon sales in the U.S. Of that 1.4% of the U.S. market wagons have, the Outback alone makes up 1.2%. In other words, 
almost all of it. That means all wagons sold by all other brands combined would account for just 0.2% of the total U.S. new car market. So when we talk about wagons, we're essentially talking about one model with, with a very decent industry share, and then a, a handful of other models that, that quite frankly don't sell very well. The Outback is an example of how wagon-like vehicles can be successfully marketed in the United States, and perhaps gives an idea of how they are likely to look in the future if they stick around. Though it retains many of the basic features of a wagon, the car is lifted a bit and covered in plastic cladding to give it more of a rugged outdoor appearance. It retains the basic silhouette of the wagon, but the Outback has evolved over time to incorporate more attributes of SUVs and crossovers, Subaru told CNBC. This includes standard all-wheel drive, the ability to tow up to 3,500 pounds, and a full 8.7 inches of ground clearance, higher than what is found on many SUVs, the company said. They were one of the early players, obviously, in this crossover space before the term crossover was even uh, mentioned, um, and that's, you know, again, when they were being called wagons. Um, so I think they've done well. They've, they've got a very loyal buyer. Um, they've expanded into, you know, the certainly the, the outdoor lifestyle buyer has, uh, has, has long been a Subaru uh, advocate. So I think, you know, as that, as that um, continues to develop and people are more interested in, in active, active lives and, uh, and certainly uh, what, what Subaru has to offer from uh, just a, an on-road capability, but, uh, but also on, on dirt and on, on trails even. The Outback shows that selling a wagon in the U.S. may be a lot easier if it happens to look like a sport utility vehicle. In fact, it might be one of the only wagon-like vehicles to survive in the United States. Uh, but yeah, no question about it. The, the, the wagon market is certainly taking cues from the, from the SUV and crossover uh, segments and uh, adding, uh, as you said, a little bit of cladding, uh, raising uh, the, the ground clearance up a little bit to, to, to give it that, that view that essentially it, it can compete with the crossover. That rather dire outlook has not stopped other automakers from rolling the dice, though. General Motors sells the Buick Regal Tour X, a U.S. version of the Opel Insignia wagon GM used to sell in Europe when it owned the Opel brand. Notably, the U.S. version has the same plastic cladding and slight lift which is not seen on the European version. But with a lower center of gravity, it gives more sedan-like driving dynamics and a lower roof for easy rooftop access, key features wagon buyers want in a car. There are several positive signs for wagon fans elsewhere in the U.S. if they have the cash. Much of the variety in the U.S. wagon market is found at the higher end, where luxury and high performance can gloss over the otherwise dowdy and domestic image the wagon has. Given the fact that the countries with some of the highest wagon sales are Germany and the Scandinavian nations, it makes sense that most of these premium wagons are from German and Scandinavian automakers. The Swedish brand Volvo is perhaps the brand best known for wagons and it's among the brands most committed to the segment in the United States. Though Volvo has lately focused intensely on building out its lineup of sport utility vehicles, a substantial portion of its portfolio is still in wagons. We have the same, I see the same opportunities in the US. So one part of me is a little bit confused that this should be much bigger. You know, the volume should be much, much, much bigger. But then we have the SUV trend in the US that probably overlaps that kind of, because you get the space too in the SUV. But the, I would say the wagons are, for me, they are beautiful. And I think you, you, you see the cars here. Design-wise, they are not boxy anymore and they are not boring. You get both. Uh, you get the, the driving capabilities as a sedan and you get more space and also it looks sporty. And that's what we aim for. Volvo sells the mid-sized V60 wagon and the larger V90. Both can be bought in the cross-country trim, which means the car is lifted and comes with the familiar dark cladding on the sides of the car. And Volvo also has a 415 horsepower performance hybrid version of its V60, 
bearing Volvo's Polestar brand, which was once its in-house performance shop and now specializes in making high-performance electric vehicles. Mercedes-Benz sells its E-Class wagons in the U.S., mostly to well-heeled buyers with families. The car sells especially well in the Northeast. Wagon sales make up a tiny portion of Mercedes' U.S. total, 0.7% to be exact. But buyers are loyal, and they pay. An E450 4MATIC wagon starts at about $66,000, and the higher-performance AMG E63S starts above $108,000. Fellow German automaker Audi said in August of 2019 it plans to bring the RS6 Avant wagon to the U.S. The RS6 Avant is a performance wagon Audi will sell alongside the A4 all-road wagon it currently offers and the A6 all-road, which Audi said in October it will also be bringing back to the U.S. In recent years in the United States, Audi has only sold its A4 all-road wagon, which is also a popular choice among premium wagon buyers. Even Porsche has a wagon-like vehicle. However, the number of wagon-loving diehards seems to be shrinking, and many in the industry are not optimistic that the wagon will make a comeback anytime soon. I just, I wonder how many more cracks at the bat we're going to get here from, from this forbidden fruit and, and these wagons coming from overseas. So things are, are getting, uh, you know, even, even slimmer for, for wagon enthusiasts out there. And so uh, the future for wagons, is, it's going to be tough for, for future European wagons to, to really come to the United States. What buyers are more likely to end up with is a crossover, which some say is really a wagon in a slightly different form. There isn't a lot of what I would call pure wagon development going on right now. Um, so, you know, with that as a backdrop, um, the, the, I guess, prospects for the wagon aren't necessarily strong, uh, but the caveat here is you're getting into that, that, you know, blurring area where what is a wagon and what's a crossover. And a lot of the stuff that is being developed is, you know, what I would argue is a shorter, um, height-wise uh, vehicles that, that have kind of that crossover style but are probably more like a wagon. Sport utility vehicles do seem to have certain practical advantages over traditional passenger cars that consumers seem to find irresistible. Most importantly, their taller height gives drivers a better view of the road and often a more comfortable upright seating position. Customers also consider them easier to get in and out of. Fuel economy has also improved on SUVs to the point where they are often about as efficient as comparably sized passenger cars. But their image as more rugged, sporty, and versatile vehicles has played a significant role in their appeal, say many industry watchers. They have become so popular as family vehicles that they may one day end up with the same reputation wagons themselves earned over the decades. Practical, but deeply uncool.